Hi. So before I read um, the last chapter of the, the Down River, I'm gonna make just a quick summary of what this book is all about. So there was this girl Jessie who was sent by his dad, by her dad, to this camp. That's it's called um, a limited camping or camping unlimited, and then. So she, apparently she didn't want to go there in the first place, but then she have to because Madeline or Madeline, her stepmom wants her to go there. So she met Troy and um, Freddie, which are the two closest um, friends that she had, and then Star, which she considers her sister. So there were a lot of shenanigans that happened in here, a lot of experiences that Jesse experienced with. The, the group that she had which eventually became her friends so we're almost down to the last we are down to the last chapter so last thing that happened in chapter 17 was um, Jesse and Freddie and Star they finally decided to turn the, the, themselves in to the police or to the guard or to Al but then Pug and Troy decided that they won't do that that they're gonna go through whatever they want to do so um, um, let's move on to chapter 18 okay so they finally turned turned themselves in so I think it's about time that they go home okay so it was March Late in the morning, after a heavy spring snow, and the sun was blazing. All around us, the pines were shedding their snow and their branches were lifting. Suddenly, suddenly free of the weight they'd been carrying, the canyon stream was running high and brown with snow melt. Star and Madeline and I had been out on our cross-country skis, enjoying the sunshine, and now we were headed home. Ooh, it seems like Star stayed with Jesse and now they're with Madeline. We paused as the house came into the site, the Ascenda, as we called it, and took it in. There it was, sitting on a little hill among the pines on the sunny side of the canyon, perched above the stream, our new home. To me, the newness of the part was of what I loved about it. I would always love that feeling of starting fresh here. You think they moved to Mexico? I looked to Star and Madeline. We were all smiling, reflecting each other in our sunglasses. I had an idea where they were feeling the same. I had an idea they were feeling the same way about the Ascenda. How unlikely that we'd come together. How well it had been working. How new it was still for all of us. We skied down the canyon and up to the house. I'm starved, Madeline said, stepping out of her skis. How about you? Let's fix those sandwiches, Star said, heading for the kitchen. I poured a couple of soft drinks and brought one out for Dad in the sunroom, where he was reading the papers. My bare feet feel, felt so good on the warm Mexican tiles. So yeah, I think they're in Mexico. It was wonderful out there, Dad, so warm. The snow's going too fast. I sat close to him in one of the leather chairs. Here's the first in installment on lunch. Madeline and Star fixed some sun sandwiches. Thanks. I've really been enjoying myself just being lazy this morning. I really do love this place, Dad. Especially all the light. I was thinking when I was out skiing, I had no idea it would turn out like this when it was in the planning stages. He could see I was talking about back then. Cautiously, he said, I didn't know it could turn out this well either. But you hoped it would. I didn't think there was anything good about it I didn't even want to look at it I remember that vaguely you remember that well dad I was a hard case that was when you were 15 pre Grand Canyon what I really like about 16 is how we talk how we can talk you know every so often like now it's great I just wish I didn't have to wait another whole year to get my driver's license It'd be too much easier for me if I could drive. We don't mind driving you, really. This year, fly by before you know it. You won't have the probation, the probation hanging over your head. You'll be a free woman. It's going to come fast for me, Jesse. I, I want to just hang on to you, both of you. 
It was great you got to finally meet Freddy too, after all the stories you told about him. I'm glad we took that trip. He's just as you described him, maybe even better. What a break for Freddy that they sent him to southwestern Colorado to get rehabilitated. He sure loves those mountains. You can see it in his eyes when he talks about the country they've been in, learning to fight fires. I guess it's really hard work they do, he said, but Freddy doesn't mind that. And if he does really well, he'll get to try out for the Forest Service hotshots. It's a special team of firefighters that travels all around the West fighting the worst forest fires, jumping out of planes and all that. Well, I hope he makes it. Oh, he will. And he wants to come up here sometime too, and visit us. We'd like to plan a hike together off of the north rim of the Grand Canyon and down to Thunder River. He's determined to see that place one way or another. Maybe we could all go? What you think? Sounds great. That's where the underground river comes shooting out of the cliffs, isn't it? And that's the trail where Troy disappeared. Star and Madeline brought in the sandwiches on a big tray with melon cubes around and chips and guacamole in the center. Dad's eye lit up. Chips and guacamole are his natural food. Star heard the sound of a vehicle stopping at the driveway. The mail, Star said. I'll get it. With a spring in her step, she was out of the house. I've never seen anyone get so excited about getting mail, even junk mail. In a minute, she was back, waving a letter in her hand. Jessie, it's a letter from Adam. Well, read it. Okay, okay. Catching her breath, here goes. Dear Star and Jessie, what a flash it was to hear from you. And thanks for sending the pictures of your place. I practically karate chopped a tree into splinters when I read that you two wound up together. I always thought you seemed like sisters anyways. No, I haven't heard from Rita either, except that she's back in New York. And thanks for all the news about Freddy. I miss you guys. And I wish I could join you for that Thunder River hike, but not this time. Yes, I'd wonder too if we'd ever hear what, hear what became of Troy. When I heard that they didn't catch him, I could almost see him down there in Mexico, living like a king. Well, ladies and gentlemen, wonder no more. Troy has been found. No, he's not passing time in his beach hammock, sipping pina colotics and sending his servants out for red snapper. He's been in L.A. all this time. No imagine, hey? They, could, they caught him last week in Malibu. By following the trail of his credit, credit card receipts, wouldn't you know? His parents are coming back from Europe for the occasion. I'll convince them it's time to put Troy's feet on the fire. To the fire. How do I know all this stuff? Just heard it last night. Believe it or not, my fox and I have been in touch with Al. Yes, the very same Al. Now get this. I'm going to be working with Al for Al this summer at the Hoods in the Woods as a kitchen slave and all-around gopher. He runs a much bigger program in the summer than we were there. Imagine, I'm going to be back in Colorado and getting paid for mountain climbing and rafting, besides the scholarly work. Kind of a junior counselor too. The idea being that if this fool can get something out of the program, anybody can. Yes, I said rafting. We are, believe it or not, going to attempt the mighty canyons of the San Juan. Not once, but three times during the summer. All swears by that river, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. And we'll be doing west water too. I hope I'm making both of you sick and that you'll become to, and you'll come to visit me at Discovery Unlimited. I better start using the real name. I'm one of the staff now. Here's my hidden agenda. One day, I'm going to be a big time river guide on, you guessed it, the Grand. Love you both. And here's to this crazy dream of mine that one day, the five of us will once more run the Grand Canyon of the Colorado. Love, Adam. P.S. This time we'll launch in broad daylight. <laughs> that was quite a letter, Madeline said. You two should wound up with some great friends. Friends and family, Star said, with her green eyes shining. She pulled something out of her jeans pocket and held it up for us to admire. It was another of those friendship bracelets she'd been weaving. I still had the one on my wrist that she'd given me in the canyon. What you got there, Star? Dad asked. Star sat down, then tied a new bracelet around her ankle, silver speckled with blue. There, she said, hitching up her jeans a bit to reveal her now-completed collection. Four of them each with our sole colors, one for every member of our family. The
and so I hope you guys enjoyed the Down River as much as I have enjoyed reading it to you guys. So I'll be, I will be posting the questions to our Seesaw and Google Classroom. Thank you.